Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including big earthquakes and effects of the ongoing geomagnetic excursion. Let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day brought the coronal holes through central heliographic longitudes as the active regions grace the limbs. We might recall yesterday that with the solar wind easing back and nothing more expected, we should actually have been expecting a cosmic ray health alert through the app, and with the KP index flatlining over the last 15 straight hours, now we've got it. KP zero days see the most heart attacks, strokes, psychological issues, car crashes, surgical mistakes, and the list goes on. Quick note on quakes, 6.2 in Mariana and 6.6 in Japan yesterday, both at blot echo depths, however, and barely felt at the surface. Let's kick off the articles with what must be the 8 billionth solar cycle 25 forecast from the science community. They are within that range of having approximately the same level solar cycle that we just had, which is where all the signals are pointing at the moment. Even if you can step back and over longer periods, we can see the grand minimum collapses maybe only one more cycle away. Up next, folks, this is the global climate map, which will race around the internet today like a woke meme on steroids. A lot of red and white here. But of course, comparing to a Dalton minimum and cyclical cool period is basically cheating. This is the more telling chart compared to the core warming period, which also happened to be grand solar maximum and a hot phase of the climate cycle. Much more blue on this one. Let's go to Hubble and check out NGC 2608 and apparently a whole bunch of other things. The two bright points are actually foreground stars, much closer to us than the galaxy, and then all the other colored dots around in the background are other galaxies cluttering the field of view. I call that blue cluster at the four o'clock position, dibs. Okay, folks, now we get a bit more serious. They are noticing that the magnetism of the solar system is toying with the ionosphere. The solar wind north and south are separated by a Parker plasma instability spiral, concentric, rippling. Running along the north and south edges of the current sheet are the interplanetary magnetic fields from the sun's coronal holes. This rippling sheet crosses the Earth's path about every two weeks, changing the magnetism of the electric field of solar wind in which the Earth is orbiting, and that magnetism is correlated with the appearance of ionosphere anomalies, which then excite and feed into the Earth's electromagnetic circuit, where they can affect pressure cells, cloud opacity, total electron content, lightning, and joule heating. Up next, folks, we haven't covered this topic in the climate realm as much, but I've been gearing up for a special video on this topic. It is going to be a few more days on that one. But over the last year or so, a major push to identify climate model bias and uncertainty has begun. The findings are pretty consistent in causation, even if the level of error propagation varies. And that cause is a misunderstanding of clouds. It wasn't long ago that I remember learning in school how clouds were part of the greenhouse effect and that more clouds equals a warmer world. Of course, in reality, this is only true if it's sunny all day and then cloudy all night to blanket the heat in. This concept has been repeatedly challenged since late 2017 when those Princeton scientists said the cooling power of clouds was underappreciated, and we have seen a flood of confirmations since then, including that article we're rambling on about right now. Up next, great news and a touch of reality. They are getting better at modeling induced electricity from solar storms. This is a major effort with major merit, and they are including power lines and all geological features in the mix. This is the only way to do it. But sadly, they say that they cannot really achieve as good of prediction or mitigation procedures beyond the 2003 Halloween storm levels which is where we'd be at the highest risk for these power infrastructure events. It's those big blasts that concern us the most, especially as Earth's magnetic field is weakening. And that is the likely explanation for the weird effects of the August 2018 solar storm. This is about the fifth paper we've covered on the topic of just that one solar storm, and there's many others we actually didn't cover. Essentially, they still have no clue why such weak space weather was able to produce such major geomagnetic effects. The peak of the storm here is said to possibly be due to the coronal hole stream at the time, but the low latitude ionospheric irregularities, especially in the storm recovery phase, were not something they expected. But as Earth's field weakens and the magnetic poles continue moving, we need to continue to expect to see these higher than expected reactions to weaker space weather than we'd expect. And it's one of the key things we're going to be tracking this upcoming sunspot cycle. Now, last but not least, 
been waiting for this one. The major record Arctic ozone hole from earlier this year had been blamed on many things, but it turns out that the cold temperature of the stratosphere cannot be blamed. It was that cold in 2010 and 2011, and such an ozone hole didn't happen. They are looking to explore the polar vortex influence, but we also had a major vortex event back in 2010, just ask Europe. And so the paper leaves a bit of an open question which can be filled with the weakening magnetic field of the planet. The weakening field should have the most effect at the northern polar cusp where solar protons travel along the interplanetary magnetic fields and stream into the upper atmosphere. And remember, while UV light helps make ozone, the proton bombardment destroys it. That's the key factor in this year's ozone hole that they're missing. Folks, from the unexpected space weather events causing unexpected Earth effects, to solar system magnetism modulating the atmospheric circuit which can play in clouds and pressure and temperature, to the weakening magnetic field of our planet and how it's letting the sun take over usually internally driven patterns, this is not going to stop as long as Earth's magnetic field continues to fade. We'll continue seeing these crazy weather swings, like 90s and a tornado in Wyoming and then two days later, this. By the way, this just happened this past week. Folks, everything from the details of space weather, the global electric circuit, the solar modulation of weather and climate, the super flares and how it's all interacting with Earth's magnetic field, including what's going to happen next, is in our textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, 3rd edition. If you want free shipping inside the USA, you can use the media mail code. It does mean it will likely take an extra couple days to arrive via that pathway. We greatly appreciate your support. More on the magnetic field, changes, and the sun can be found at our channel homepage and at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org, where you can find all of our top videos. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.